Okay, so for hardware, I'm going to be using an old gaming desktop. It's got an Intel i5, older CPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM. Um, it's got a one terabyte hard drive, nothing super special. Um, it's also got a, a small SSD on it. I didn't even mention that because it's tiny, but I'm running PFSense on it. And this is great because PFSense does not need super high level hardware to run. In fact, you can actually get a really small PFSense box. Uh, I will have a link to it in the description below. It's about $200. Um, I think a better alternative to that though is using older hardware if you can. So what I did is I had this old gaming desktop, I hadn't used it, didn't have a reason to upgrade it, it was just kind of rotting. So what I did was I put PFSense on a USB and then I, f I downloaded PFSense onto my old gaming desktop and now it works great. And if you don't know what PFSense is, it's an open source firewall project. Uh, it's extremely, extremely customizable in terms of, you know, your typical gateway. So most of the time, you know, you'll see, you'll see your Xfinity modem slash gateway slash router all in one device. And that will be where you get your information or that will be where you get your internet from. And it's also going to be what's generating your Wi-Fi. And those devices, um, they're okay but they really do not offer a lot of customization and in a lot of ways they're very limited. So if you are interested in learning more about networking and configuring your own network and you know having all the bells and whistles that some of the enterprise level devices have, PFSense is a great place to start. Um, moving on, I also have a Unify 24 port power over ethernet switch. This switch is completely unnecessary for people just starting out um, 24 ports is a lot and you definitely you know if you have like a small home or an apartment this is not necessary by any means and I actually have an alternative that I will talk about in a second um, but on this switch I am not using OpenWRT which I could be using instead I'm just using the Ubiquiti Unified Network application or the, uh, the Ubiquiti console and this is you know this software it's it's okay it's not a it's not as customizable as openwrt or pfsense because it's not it's not an open source project um it's limited in a lot of ways honestly but it gets the job done and in terms of consumer managed switches this is definitely above average so and if you don't want to shell out for this 24 port switch you don't have to um you can get the switchflex mini instead so this five port switch uses the same software. It has, you know, almost the same amount of features, honestly. It just has less ports and it's way cheaper, it's $29. Um, the 24 port switch is, you know, it starts at $400 and then it goes up exponentially from there as you add more and more features. But this SwitchFlex Mini is actually what I started out with. So to get my feet wet and get comfortable with the Unify software, um, I got this switch and so I can say for us like for certain that if you are interested in managed switches and you want to follow my network videos, you can do all the configurations with just this switch. You do not need anything else. Um, this is really all it takes. So I wanted to throw that in there. Um, for my router, I'm going to be using the Linksys EA7500 V2. Um, I didn't realize how great this router was uh, until very recently when I got a, a few other routers. Um, but on it, I'm going to be running OpenWRT, which if you do not know, this is also a open source project. It is a operating system for your router. And much like PFSense, you're going to be installing this onto the hardware and you're going to be using this this OpenWRT to replace the proprietary software that's on the router. So instead of using the Linksys software, I'm going to be using the OpenWRT software. And OpenWRT actually gives you way more options than the proprietary software. So, you know, as an example, I can change, um, I can select my individual radios that are on my router. I can change their channel, I can change their encryption, I can change everything. I can hide the ESSID, I can keep it up. 
Um, there are so many different options and it's all just right at your fingertips. That's why I love OpenWRT. And the reason I love this router is because the MediaTek chipsets for the radios are super compatible with IoT devices. So you should keep this in mind. Not every router is going to come with chipsets and radios that are compatible with IoT devices. So if you did not know, IoT devices can only use a 2.4 giga uh, 2.4 gigahertz um, radio, and even within that, they are also limited by certain chipsets. So if you're using like Marvell or something, you might not have the same success. Um, I have a I have another router that uses the the Marvell radio chipsets, and they're just not. You know, they, they don't want to work with my IoT devices. I finally figured out a workaround, but it's kind of a pain. So I'd highly recommend this Linksys ES7500. It works very well with OpenWRT. It's got super good range. Um, I have four wireless networks running off of it with three different VLANs, which I will show you how to configure in my subsequent videos. Um, I honestly just can't recommend this enough. So I'm going to have a link to all this hardware in the description below. But just for a quick reference, this is going to run you about $130, the router, um, on Amazon. The Unify 24 port switch is $400, but you can buy the $29 one, and you can get everything that you really need, to be honest. This PFSense, um, you can either put it on old hardware for free, or you can buy their little PFSense box. Um, I believe it's $200. I'll have a link to that in the description below. But yeah, that's pretty much it. And I hope to see you guys in the configuration videos.